Welcome to lesson three. We are going to use a polynomial to maximize volume. Our objectives are to write a polynomial from a context. We will simplify it and then we will graph in order to maximize our volume and solve dimension problems such as this. Think about volume. Volume has three dimensions. So if we were to multiply all these x's, we have a total of three x's, we would end up with a cubic function. So in all these problems, if you're going to be maximizing volume, you're going to be working with cubic functions. All right, let's look at our example. In our example, we have a box of green tea, and here's our problem, here's our scenario. The design of must maximize the volume, so we want the most volume possible on the inside while keeping the sum of the dimensions at a total of six inches. So that means that the length plus the width plus the height can be no more than six inches. And that perhaps has to do with the factory or distribution or, or um, shelving. So for some reason there's a constraint. And we have another constraint. The length must be one and a half times, the, the length has to be one and a half times the height of this box. What should each dimension, length, width, and height be in order to maximize the volume? Okay, so what I've done is I've said let x equal the height. So we need a variable. We don't know the height, so we'll just call the height x. Then let's move on to some things that we do know. We know that the length must be one and a half times the height. So let's identify length. So our length must be one and a half times the height. Well, x is height, so we need to multiply that by 1.5 to get the length. The length is one and a half times the height, and the height we said was x. Okay, all we have now is width. So, they didn't really talk about width in this problem. However, we know that the total dimensions can be no more than six inches. We need it to be six inches. So if we start with six inches, our width is gonna be six inches minus whatever we already took up here with the height and with the length. So we are going to subtract our height, which is x, and we are going to subtract our length, which is 1.5x. And that's our width. So let's go ahead and simplify this just a little bit. We have two like terms here. We have an x and we have a 1.5x and we need to put those together. So our width is going to be 6 minus 2.5x. Remember that if there's nothing in front of the x it's like having a 1 there. So a negative 1 plus a negative 1.5 or a negative 1 minus 1.5 is the same as a negative 2.5. And that's our width. All right, now we have an expression for each area of this box. So we could write those here in, on this. We know that our width is 6 minus 2.5x. Actually, let's change that color a little bit so we can see it better. Our width, which is the distance going back is going to be 6 minus, same, same color, actually. And then our length going across the front here is going to be 1.5x. And then our height up and down right here is just x. So our width, let's make that a little clearer, is here. Our length is here and our height is here. And we know that in order to get volume, you need to multiply the length times the width times the height. So if we do that, we have x, which is our height, times 1.5x, which is our length, and our width we said was 6 minus 2.5x. So now we have a polynomial function that's not quite in standard form, and so we just need to simplify it and use our math skills to do that. So we would multiply x times 1.5x to get 1.5x squared. 
and then we would want to distribute that into the parentheses in order to get our final polynomial. So if we distribute that, 1.5 times 6 is going to be 9x squared, and then 1.5 times 2.5 is going to be, and I'm going to use a calculator for that one just to make sure I get it right, so we have 1.5 times 2.5 is 3.75, so that's 3.75x cubed. Okay, and there is our polynomial, and if you'll notice, that is a cubic function, which it should be. From here, we can graph this, and then we can analyze our graph. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I went ahead and I went to Desmos and I graphed that function and this is the graph that I got. So you can see it's a cubic and you can see that because it's mathematical, the ends continue on forever. So this end continues on indefinitely here and this end continues on indefinitely down here. We don't care about this part of the quadratic and we don't care about or sorry, the cubic, and we don't care about this part of the cubic. It doesn't really make sense for our context. All we really care about is from zero to whatever this number is right here. That's the only domain that's really important based on this context. Obviously, negative volumes and negative numbers wouldn't make any sense. Now remember that our problem is asking us to maximize volume. What is our maximum and what are our dimensions that could get us there? Well, looking at this Looking at this graph, let's define our axes first of all. So our x-axis, if we look back to the original problem, we said that x was equal to height, and our y is v here, which would be our volume. So back on our graph, we can label our x-axis as height. Go ahead and do that. So this is our height. I'll just put an h here. And our y-axis is our volume. So looking at this point, 1.6, right here approximately is the height that would get us a maximum volume of 7.68. So we know from this graph that we cannot have a volume of any more than 7.68 in our T box. And in order to do that, we would need a height of 1.6. So let's write that. This is what we know right now. So our height is going to be 1.6. Now let's go back and look at what we called our length and our width. So our length is 1.5 times our height. So we can come over here and we can write our length as 1.5 times x. And remember that x is our height, so times 1.6. We can solve to get that. Two point four, and finally we have our width. And our width, if we look at that equation, simplified equation, we said was six minus two point five times our height. So six minus two times the height, which was one point six, and we can simplify that one as well. Let's take 2.5 times 1.6, and we get 4, convenient. And so then our width, it comes to 2. So now we know the dimensions of our t-box. Our height will be 1.6, our length will be 2.4, and our width will be 2. And those are the dimensions based on the constraints that we need in order to maximize a volume of 7.68. And that concludes our lesson on how to maximize volume. So you will see in your practice some examples that are similar, an example that's very similar to this, and then you'll see an example that's a little bit different. But if you keep the goal in mind, the goal is to write three expressions 
to represent different sides of a container, simplify them by distributing, multiplying them together, and then finally graph, and then you can interpret your graph. And you should be very successful at this assignment.